she <laughs> swallowed it. And just, so it's like, let's just be honest about how people live their exactly. lives. And people she's doing something. Sex. And she is doing something. Married that, people. There you go. <laughs> it's Yes, that's that's the issue. That's the issue that a man and a wife have sexual relations. Uh, I'll criticize Lauren Borber right here, and why wouldn't I? Because this is not the behavior that befits a congresswoman, but it's not the issue, and they know that. That's why it's in the Tower of Babbling. Last story in the Tower of Babbling. Uh, the new activist who poses as a moderator on Meet the Press pulled the cowardly move of editing a pre-taped interview to pretend to fact-check President Trump on the Democrat Party's obscene abortion stance. Because the radical people on this are really the people, the Democrats, that say after five months, six months, seven months, eight months, seven months, and even after birth, you're allowed to so terminate Democrats the baby. Democrats aren't saying that. I just have to say, Democrats are not saying that. Does it bother you, though, that women say their lives are being put at risk? Do you feel you bear any responsibility? Because as you say, you are responsible it for having going to happen. Right over this is an issue that's been going on for a long time, and it's a very polarizing issue. Because of what's been done and because of the fact we brought it back to the states, we're going to have people come together on this issue. They're going to determine the time because nobody wants to see five, six, seven, eight, nine months. Nobody wants to see abortions when you have a baby in the womb. I said with Hillary Clinton when we had the debate, I made a statement, rip the baby out of the womb in the ninth month. You're allowed to do that, and you shouldn't be allowed to do that. Again, no one and, and is again, arguing listen, for that. That's look, not a part of anyone's uh, look, Mr. The Democrats are able to kill the baby after birth. Let me talk to Nobody you. Nobody wants that. that. Democrats don't want that. So, right? um, Democrats do. In the state of Virginia, the former governor there, in fact, on a radio interview, said, yes, if the toe of the baby is still inside the woman, certainly you can kill the baby. In the state of Maryland, Democrats proposed a bill that would allow you to starve a child who had been born and was home fully outside of the mother to starve the baby or make sure the baby doesn't have any nutrients or any liquids or any water. So, in fact, this is the case, and we all know that. That was also during the interview where President Trump appeared to walk back his heretofore pretty strong stance against abortion by talking about this negotiated timeline. That's the third story of the Tower babbling. You, by now, if you've been listening to a uh, disciple's view, you probably recognize my voice. You might have known it before when I spent you know, eight years filling in for Rush Limbaugh. God rest Rush. We thank you, Rush, for that opportunity. And we'll get to know each other further. Hopefully one day at a live event, get to shake your hand. I love that. I never get to see you. And AFR makes those things possible. But you'd probably recognize my voice by now. We started the show talking about people who don't have the key to solve the puzzle of what's going on in life. They don't have the Bible. They don't have the fruit of the Spirit to consult. They don't have God's Word to check and say, Ah, yes, this person is acting in self-interest, in self-aggrandizement. This person is not patient. They're not kind. They're not loving. They're not temperate. This person is not acting in accordance with God. They're not abiding. They don't walk in the light. They're blind. They can't see. They're captives. They don't have that tool. Because we have the tool, I think it is incumbent upon us to recognize how potent the tool this is and to recognize this, that in our country, we are generations away. Unless God Almighty decides, and he may well, he may well make the decision to say enough now of my people, the, the body of Christ, have fallen to their knees in prayer. There's enough of you who have done this, who've recognized even the small sins in your life. You've truly repented. That is an ongoing process of coming back to me, of allowing me to make you holy, that you've done through this. You truly have very, you have, you have genuine sorrow for the way the country's fallen in any role you played that, that he might well just say, yes, I will rescue you just as I've done before for my people. Yes, I will sweep D.C. out of, these criminals will be out, and will bring in good, godly people. He can do that, but if he doesn't, we're generations away. Hey, Will. I done.
disagree with scripture. God will never disagree with himself. He will never counteract scripture. He will never change the message. He will never change in characteristic. In these ways, we do know God's voice. If we live in the word, if we live in the light, if we abide, the more time we spend with someone. I was visiting with my pastor this morning. He asked me how I'm doing with this. in some kind of hot seat. He's being questioned and he knows nothing's going to happen to him. My daughter was three when our fire alarm went off. We lived in a house with a Swiss wood on the floors and on the ceilings and the walls. It, if it went up, it would burn down very, very quickly. And the fire alarm was ringing. And my wife and I got out of bed and smelled smoke. I said to my wife, get dressed, get out. I went into my daughter's room and she was not awake. The fire alarm had not woken her up. Do you know what it did? When I spoke her name and said, get up, instantly she was awake. I spoke her name, get up, get out of bed now. She instantly woke up because it was her father's voice. Well, not her father's, her dad's. Gladly there was no fire. The smoke we felt was psychosomatic. You know the father's voice. Please, please, I beg you, make sure your kids and grandkids and neighbors know it. This is The Disciples View. I'm Todd Herman. God bless you and God bless your family. The views and opinions expressed in this broadcast may not necessarily reflect those of the American Family Association or American Family Radio. 90.5 KTXG, Greenville, Dallas. Tons of apps on your phone, but do you have the AFR app? Well, I don't think I can download it. No worries. The AFR app is available not only for Apple and Android users, but also on Amazon Alexa and Roku. But I only want to listen to music and... The the new music option allows you to stream music anytime you want. I'm downloading it now. Download the AFR app today at AFR.net. This is American Family Radio, a listener-supported ministry of the American Family Association. several times over the years, but this is the first meeting of the two since the Israeli leader was re-elected last year. We will continue to uphold the values that both our proud democracies cherish, uh, and I think that working together will realize the promise, roll back the dangers, and bring a better future for our region and the world. We can make history. We live in uh, uncertain times, rapidly changing times. So I want to reassert here before you, Mr. President, that one thing is certain and one thing will never change, and that is Israel's commitment to democracy.
U.S. Attorney General Merrick Garland appearing before the Republican-led House Judiciary Committee today to address allegations that his department has been weaponized politically against conservatives. Louisiana Republican Congressman Mike Johnson presses Garland about whether he had any discussions with Special Counsel David Weiss about the investigation into President Biden's son, Hunter. Can you tell us about any briefings or discussions that you personally have had with Mr. Weiss regarding any and all federal investigations of Hunter Biden? I'm going to say again. I promised the Senate that I would not interfere with Mr. Weiss. So you have not, no, I'm just under oath today, your testimony is you have not had any discussions with Mr. Weiss about this matter? Under oath, my testimony today is that I promised that the, uh, the Senate I would not um, intrude in his investigation. The House Transportation and Infrastructure Committee holds a hearing with Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg over issues affecting air, train, and car travel over the past year. Pennsylvania Congressman Scott Perry says he's not happy about the administration pushing electric vehicles. The people I work for, my bosses, can't afford... Corri capo, what's right now? These are not forces. Yeah, no, do you recall that? いまさにしたよ。デモクラッツは。ミサンプルマイ。the Roe v. Wade ruling, which sent authority on the issue back to the states. Now, the people, people have the right to negotiate the truth that they have no rights at all. Because the radical people on this are really the people that say after five months, six months, seven months, eight months, seven months, even after you're allowed to terminate the baby. I just have to say, welcome to the people who are talking about the people who are talking about the people who are talking about the もう一つの方はあの男の方あの金曜日行くあの人も喋ってくるのいやあんまり喋んないけどあの手を挙げて挨拶するよああだからあの体を動かしてるからあのお父さんと同じ年だけど元気だよね なお、俺とこんなでとし。そう、80歳や、80。80歳。うん。28 Investigators say inmate Todd Whitfield called Moreno and told her to look at him waving from his jail cell on September 5th. Moreno then tried to expose herself to him from a parking garage, but court papers revealed the presence of a Dallas County Marshal marked vehicle detoured her plans. Moreno had been employed by the county for eight months. She was charged with abuse of official capacity and posted $5,000 bond. CJ Papa Fox News. American Family News is online at AFN.net and download the AFN mobile app on your Apple or Android device. I must repeat. Are you able to stand steadfast in this post-Christian world? Join Frank Turek, Gary Habermas, Hugh Ross, Richard Howe, and more than 40 other speakers for Southern Evangelical Seminary's 29th Annual Steadfast National Conference. No matter where you are on your faith journey, you will leave this event better equipped to penetrate the culture with the gospel and defend the truthfulness of Christianity. It all happens October 13th and 14th at First Baptist Church in Rock Hill, South Carolina. Register now at ses.edu slash national conference. We inform. Religious freedom is about people of faith being able to live out their faith, live out their convictions, no matter where they are. We equip. This is a battle of worldviews. And we activate. We also rejoice in our sufferings because we know that suffering produces perseverance. Perseverance, character, and character hope. This is at the core on American Family Radio. 
Welcome to the core here on American Family Radio. Good to be with you today on the program. Walker Wildman here with you on this edition of the core each week. Uh, Rick Green and myself, we're your host for the program. I'm with you most uh, Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays. And of course, Rick is with uh, each of you on Tuesday and Thursday. Um, Rick uh, Rick Green is a a founder of Patriot Academy, and um, I'm an alumni of Patriot Academy, so I'm a little bit biased, but um, uh, Rick's doing some great work over at Patriot Academy. He's doing the... Uh, constitution um, courses, uh, constitutional coaches. He's training constitution coaches. He's also doing the uh, National Academy program where he brings in young people and adults um, each summer at various state capitals around the country and trains them on our founding fathers, on the constitution, and on biblical citizenship. Uh, So, uh, we appreciate all that Rick does, and we appreciate him hosting the show uh, each week with me. Um, you know, um, it's uh, when we look when we think about citizenship. Of course, our, our primary citizenship as Christians is in heaven, but uh, the Lord has placed us placed us in um, in our different spheres of influence and in our different locations and our different proximities to each other uh, for a purpose and uh, we just can't lose sight of that uh, that we do have a purpose we have an eternal purpose um, and wherever you are God has a plan and wants to use you for his glory and for his kingdom so we just got to remember that uh, that that God does have a purpose for us he does have a plan and we just can't forget that hey uh, throughout this the, the fall uh, 2023 uh, I want to be in a couple cities around the country. Um, I'll be in Fredericksburg, Virginia, um, and a few other places. But if you ever want to check out our events that we have throughout the year, uh, we try to travel most of the country, um, especially where we have a large listening audience. And uh, so that's what we're going to be doing uh, fall 2023 and heading towards the end of the year. We're going to be traveling around the country hosting these events called an evening. Well, on a, on a an evening. Uh, I'll be there. My brother Wesley will be there. And then yeah. Debbie West now with the High Word of God will be there as well. Check out. It's good time. So uh, yeah. go there uh, and uh, go to EFA.net forward slash events and check out uh, those event locations. Um, jumping into some of the stories I want to get to today, the um, the uh, climate hoax is something I talk about pretty, pretty often, and uh, it's really become a religion for many people, uh, promoting what they call climate change. It used to be global warming until the globe stopped warming, and then they changed it to climate change. And, and as I always say, if it rains, it's climate change, and if it's a drought, it's climate change. So it's a win-win from an ideological perspective. There's no such thing as non-climate change, okay? No matter what happens, it's always climate change, and it's always your fault. That's the narrative that we get from the John Kerry's of the world. And, um, you know, it's, it's a major, major problem. But I wanted to play a clip here. This gentleman, uh, his name is Tom Harris. He's an international... He's part of the International Climate Science Coalition, and he's he's on Fox News uh, in recent months talking about what he believes is is the climate scare and how it's how it's all based on models that don't work. This is Tom Harris. Let's listen. The most maddening part of all of that, though, is that these policies they're not just destroying lives; they're rooted in lies. All of them. Our next guest was once a climate alarmist, but now says the entire movement is, quote, a scam. Tom Harris is the executive director of the International Climate Science Coalition. He joins me now. Tom, good to see you tonight. Now, you actually say the only way to get rid of this is to go after the science of climate change. Explain. Yeah, exactly. A lot of people will say, well, you know, uh, Canada, for example, puts out so little greenhouse gas emissions that we shouldn't uh, we shouldn't actually try to reduce it because China is double the United States. Well, the trouble is people argue that, well, yes, but we have to set an example to the world and we have to be good citizens and all that sort of thing. So they're using these arguments quite often that China's doubled the emissions of the U.S., etc. But, but the real underlying thing is that 
there is no climate crisis. You know, I was originally an aerospace engineer and I would give speeches and I wrote articles. I wrote one in the Ottawa Citizen about comparative climatology, how studying the planets helps us understand the Earth better. And I used the example of the runaway greenhouse effect on Venus. I said, this could happen on the Earth if we don't reduce carbon dioxide. Well, a local professor of Carleton, at Carleton University, professor of geology, he liked my article so much, he used it in his course on climate change. And But he said to the students, but that part about Venus is wrong. What happened on Venus cannot physically happen on the Earth, and he explained why. Now, I thought, who is this climate change denier? Well, he invited me into his lab, and he showed me the geologic history that he and others are finding, and they found no consistent correlation between carbon dioxide and Earth's temperature. At times, CO2 was 1,300% of today, and we were stuck in very cold conditions. So it was all over the board. So I started wondering, well, maybe he's right. He exposed me to a lot of people who actually she showed me that there are thousands of scientists and here's a book actually that illustrates that it's called climate change reconsidered and this is on climatechangereconsidered.org there are thousands of references here which talk about the fact that there is no foundation to the climate scare it's all but based wait. on models that don't yeah. work <laughs> wow he said uh, his eyes were opened to the fact that there is no correlation between CO2 levels and uh, and uh, global warming or the Earth's temperatures. That was Tom Harris. He's part of the International Climate Science Coalition. And he, he used to be a part of the cabal. You know, he used to be all in on global warming until a fellow scientist brought him in his lab and said, look at this. This is all uh, based on faulty modeling. And you know, I, I've, I've talked multiple times about these models and, uh, you know, our, our, our meteorologists, bless their hearts, uh, they don't know what the weather's going to be next week. They might have a, an idea or they might have, a you know, a ballpark range, if you will, um, of what the weather's going to be next week. But the truth is none of us know what the weather's going to be next week. None of us know what the weather's going to be next week because we're not God. Um, and uh, so, so you can't tell me that you know what the weather was 3,000 years ago. You just can't say that. Um, so, um, and, and, and so that's, that's kind of the, 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 their premise as far as modeling and saying things with, with absolute certainty. And it just baffles me, the arrogance, you know, the arrogance behind this global warming narrative and ideology is one with such certainty. And don't you know that the earth is being destroyed by us humans and we've got to depopulate, i.e. either kill people or, or, or have less babies. That's the only two ways you can depopulate. Um, but, but, but the, the, the arrogance here, and, and here's, here's the, 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 to prove how arrogant it is, name the last time that you listened to these two professions, either an economist or a lawyer, and, and they didn't use caveated terms like probably, likely, maybe, it's possibly true. Lawyers and economists use that terminology galore. You cannot talk to an economist or a lawyer without them using caveated terms like probably, maybe, it's likely, it could happen, it might happen. Rarely, actually, if you hear a lawyer or an economist use definitive terms like it will happen and it has happened, you ought to be concerned, all right? Because they're, they're taught to caveat their 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 um, expertise and their recommendations because they don't know what the future holds. They don't know what the future holds. But you've got these these climate change scientists that that know 100% beyond the shadow of a doubt what has happened 3,000 years ago with the weather and the climate and what's going to happen 3,000 years from now. And they can tell you no questions asked. And if you raise any questions, any doubts, or you want any certainty, um, beyond their theories, then you're a climate change denier. You don't care about the planet, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, so that the certainty that they deal with um, dealing in is is a red flag in and of itself. You know, I saw a statistic the other day that um, you, you know you, you you think that 100% of scientists are 100% on board with the climate change hoax. 
I mean, when you read the headlines and you, you know, watch the mainstream media conglomerates, you would think that that in order to be a scientist, you've got to be 100% on board with this climate change theory. Well, I actually read a statistic the other day that statistically speaking, only about 0.03% of um, of, of, of scientists actually buy into this man-made global warming theory. Only about 0.03% of scientists buy into this uh, global warming theory and ideology. So it's really not an all-hands-on-deck, 100% agreeance on the effect of CO2 on our planet. I came across this other story. This is quite the humor, but not for this fellow. He was a little upset. But listen to this. Uh, This is out of Fox Business, and we'll link to this over at the podcast page. But this man was forced, he's from Canada. He was forced to ditch his $115,000 Ford Lightning electric vehicle truck during a recent family road trip to Chicago. He calls the entire electric vehicle narrative the biggest scam of modern times, and that's a quote. Um, Let me read a little bit into this story. This is funny now, but I feel a little bit bad for the gentleman. Uh, A Canadian man is calling electric vehicles, quote, the biggest scam of modern times, end quote, after his frustrating experience with an electric truck. This gentleman, Dalbir Bella from uh, Winnipeg area in Canada, he bought a Ford F-150 Lightning electric vehicle in January of 2023 for 115,000 bucks plus tax. He told Fox Business he needed this vehicle for his work, but also wanted something suitable for recreational activities such as driving to his cabin or going fishing. He also wanted an environmentally friendly vehicle. See the narrative as owning one is, quote, responsible citizenship these days, end quote. So it's all about virtue and morals, right? But Bela was, uh, the gentleman, was quickly hit with the reality of owning and operating an EV soon after the purchase. The vehicle compelled him to install two charging stations. <laughs> Folks are going to fall out of their seat when they hear this. One at work and one at home for $10,000. To accommodate the charger, he had to upgrade his home's electric panel for another six grand. In all... The gentleman spent $130,000 plus tax simply for a vehicle. All right. So this is the Ford Lightning. Not long after the purchase, uh, this gentleman got into a major accident, which he said required light assembly on the front bumper. Uh, Bela, the gentleman, took the vehicle to the body shop and did not get it back for six months because they couldn't get the parts in. He said no one from Ford answered his email or his phone calls. The limitations of the electric vehicle truck became even more apparent, this is going to infuriate some of you, when Bela embarked on a chaotic 1,400-mile road trip to Chicago. Fast charging stations, which only charge electric vehicles up to 90%, cost more than gas for the same mileage. So they talk about saving money. That's a lie. Somebody ought to sue for false advertising. On the family's first stop in Fargo, North Dakota, it took two hours and 60 bucks to charge his vehicle from 10% to 90%. The charge was only good for 200 miles. Oh, man. On the second stop, he had to stop in Albertville, Minnesota. The free charger was faulty, and the phone number on the charging station was of no help. The family drove to another charging station in the Elk River, Minnesota, but that charger wasn't working as well. So they ended up ditching the EV and rented a good old gas-burning car for the rest of their trip to Chicago. And in the meantime, their 130000 bucks was down the toilet. So my lesson to you folks, be careful what you wish for with the electric vehicle saga. We'll be back in a few. My name is Abraham Hamilton III, and this is the Hamilton Minute. This scripture underscores the harrowing reality that permeates the life of many who profess to be Christians. The blessing of being a Christ follower comes not only from hearing God's word, but obeying it. 
James continues, for if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man who looks intently at his natural face in a mirror. For he looks at himself and goes away and at once forgets what he was like. But the one who looks into the perfect law of liberty and perseveres, being not a hearer who forgets, but a doer who acts, he will be blessed in his doing. Listen each weekday from 5 to 6 p.m. Central for The Hamilton Corner with Abraham Hamilton III, public policy analyst for the American Family Association. This is Raising God the Girls Minute with Patty Garibay of American Heritage Girls. Parenting today has transformed into something altogether different than what it was 30 years ago. With each advent of new technology, often parents feel left in the dust on phones, online interaction, AI, you name it. So how do Christian parents faithfully navigate a godly approach to technology when the Bible doesn't even directly speak to these inventions? Our sovereign God, being outside of time, knew beforehand about every new technology, from the steam engine in 1698 to computers in the 1960s. Since technology is a tool, God spends more time speaking to those who use it rather than the technology itself. So let principles like guard your heart and commit your ways to the Lord guide your parenting surrounding new technologies. Learn more about empowering girls through the love of God at RaisingGodlyGirls.com. Hey friends, it's Jessica Peck, Dr. Nurse Mama, as your one-minute parenting coach. In a world of instant gratification, there are no instant relationships. When the world is instantly customized by our smartphone, it's hard not to translate that expectation to parenting. We want Chia Pet Parenting, minimal effort with instant results. We want to be a virtual assistant that instantly solves problems with an immediate survey about our service. Instead, we get eye-rolling, shoulder 